Okay, uh, illumination. Um, of course, we have to illuminate the flow field that we want to look at. Uh, and ideally, we would have some illumination device that would homogeneously illuminate uh, the volume that we're interested in with very, very sharp borders. So we have a very well-defined measurement volume. Of course, that's the ideal case. In reality, uh, we have to live with some limitations of the illumination devices that we have available. Uh, normally, to have enough uh, laser energy density and assure enough pulse duration for higher speed flows, we're using lasers that are commonly used for 2D and stereo PID. As Cal mentioned earlier, you need to have enough laser energy density to illuminate the uh, velocity uh, flow field that you're interested in, so normally you need a larger laser compared to planar techniques. <coughs> Lasers don't have a uniform uh, output, uh, they're Gaussian or top hat at best, and if your laser is older, you may have some strange patterns within that laser, uh, which can affect the view. Um, yeah, we have talked about using some homogenizers to help smooth out some of these variations in the laser beam. And there are options out there available, but you have high losses to those devices. So sometimes they, they cut down on the volume that you can look at. Uh, in some cases where you have very low or very slow water flows, uh, you could use a collimated LED source uh, or some other lighting to illuminate your flow field. But these are very limited cases. And this picture just shows an example of the extreme case of a uh, fairly large measured volume uh, illuminated by uh, a pulse laser. Now, how how do you configure? Uh, now, looking at just lasers now, how do we configure uh, this your measurement volume? Okay. Uh, the recommended setup, if you can achieve it, is to collimate. So expand your beam and then collimate it. Uh, to form a more or less uh, parallel uh, sheet, thick sheet. Uh, this has an advantage that it more efficiently uses all the available light that you have coming out of your laser. It also has a more well-defined measurement volume. You still have some divergence as you go downstream, but if, if you take care to call me, uh, you can minimize that effect. Uh, this also allows you to use a little trick that we've um, used uh, many times over the years of using a mirror downstream to reflect the, the, the light volume back through the measure volume. This is a, uh, not a simple way, but uh, a way of uh, optimizing uh, your laser energy density with the available laser power that you've got without going off and buying another laser. Uh, Having a well-defined measurement volume has an advantage of lowering the background noise, of basically uh, finding particles that are outside your measurement volume, uh, illuminated by uh, the, the lower energy part of your, uh, your volume. But sometimes this isn't always practical or, or possible um, for various reasons. So another common way is, is using a diverging volume uh, by using two cylindrical lenses that are oriented different from each other. If you take two cylindrical lenses that are lined up, you'll get a sheet. But if you rotate them with respect to each other, you'll get an ovular shaped volume. And this is a very easy way to, to set the divergence of your um, light volume cone. You get kind of a cone of light coming out. Uh, but the disadvantage is that it's continually diverging. And so in your area of interest, there are areas where you're not using the available light. That light is basically wasted. But if you've got enough laser power, it doesn't matter that much. Um, you can also have, and they, you know, since this is an oval-shaped beam, uh, you can have more divergence in the Z direction in your depth, too. And that can lead to a little bit higher background noise when you reconstruct your image. Now, whether you're using a collimated uh, uh, laser sheet or laser volume or a diverging, uh, it's, we 
always recommend that you put some physical aperture prior to uh, entering your, the flight that enters your experiment so that you can clip off the edges of your uh, illuminated volume so you can more clearly define the edges of your volume. So this would be, this is showing up uh, an intensity profile uh, of a, uh, a laser uh, beam or laser sheet. And by clipping, putting on a physical aperture, you clip off the lower intensity edges of, of the beam. And you also do this at the top as well, too, to define the measurement volume. 